Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice can be found on audio and video resources across the internet. I'm on social media. I'm on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and Telegram. You can also find me on alternate channels such as Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon. And I have to make a small note that I definitely will see to it that those videos are uploaded on the alternate channels today. This video, I mean, in particular, because um, this one might start to have problems like technical difficulties, or it might end up being riddled with ads in a very short period of time for obvious reasons. Once you hear the subject matter, then you will understand that most of the times, if I touch on this subject even briefly, then sometimes the video can get spammed by YouTube. If you are a new subscriber, then you may not know that I do not have a monetized channel. There's nothing money making about this channel. This channel is a free channel. It's a resource that the Lord Jesus Christ told me to set up. And so there's no ads here. There's no partnerships here. So if you ever see a video with ads on it, then you just automatically know that it's the system that has inserted the ads usually to infuriate viewers and listeners so that they have no peace when they're listening. And you can also find me on audio. As I said, you can find me on podcasts such as Odyssey, such as Podtail, such as Listen Notes. You can find me on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. If you're a new subscriber, this is a prophecy blog, and it is not the ordinary type. This is end times prophecy. This means that almost everything that you will find in the 500 plus videos that I have done so far are directly connected to, directly pertaining to end times scripture. It is not a place where I'm here to teach you how to study your Bible, or I'm here to lead you in prayers, or I'm here to do any of the things that people seem to have an expectation that should be done. I am here because the Lord God is a living God. Jesus Christ is a living God. Yah is a living God. The Holy Spirit still lives in the earth today, and he exists inside his people as he did in the ancient times. And the Lord will raise up a voice when he has things to say, especially when it comes to fallen and debauched Christianity and fallen and debauched cultures. So that is what I do here. That is the only thing that I do here. I'm extremely single-minded in my mission. And as long as you understand that, whether you've been here a long time or a short time, you are very welcome because at least you have the questionable comfort of knowing that things are consistent here. No matter how many times the camera goes on, you more or less know after two or three videos what to expect. So I had a prophecy from this morning. Today is July the 2nd. Today is July the 2nd, and I had a prophecy from this morning wherein I had a dream, and when I woke up, the Lord explained the dream to me. It is a relatively simple dream. The Lord explained the dream to me, and then the Lord gave me a very long and intricate prophetic word. So, Having written that down, that is what I thought I would prepare for tonight. I have a lot of material even from before to carry, but that is what I thought I would prepare for tonight. But when I sat down to prepare the word, to my surprise, the Lord began to give me a very, very strongly worded message. And at the end of the message, he told me that this is all one message from the prophecy in the morning. So this is not one separate word, one separate word, but he says for their sake, because they will not be able to bear it, divide the message into two parts. And so we're going to hear the second part of the message first for the Lord insists that this is the more urgent. And if I'm able to, I'll even publish it on the blog tonight just to show how serious he is about it. We'll hear the second part of the message first, and then we're going to hear the first part of the message second. This message is entitled, Incoming. That's all it's called. It's called Incoming, a prophecy of war and restoration. And the banner scripture for it is what the Lord said to me as I was writing this type of material that you will now hear. The banner scripture is Matthew chapter 10, verses 
27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. And it reads like this. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So this is the scripture that the Lord strongly impressed upon my heart when I was writing this prophecy down. And I thank him for giving it to me, not because exactly for any particular reason, I'm overly pressed with fear, but the Lord's, his comforts are very, very precious to me as I'm doing this work. This prophecy is about Israel. It is about the two Israels that exist in the world today. For purposes of understanding of the listening audience, the Jews who exist, large population in the United States, large population in the Middle East, large population scattered across Europe will be referred to as Jews or Yehudim. For the rest of the time, those who are of the seed of Israel. This is the direct descendants of the man Abraham that God personally selected to grow his own nation organically out of the lineage of a former Babylonian, Abraham, who lived in Ur of the Chaldees. They will simply be referred to as my people or true Israel. So the Jews that live in the United States, the Jews scattered across Europe, the Jews who are in the nation that is currently known as the Jewish state of Israel in the Middle East, they're going to be called the Jews or they're going to be called Yehudim. And the other people who are scattered to the four corners of the earth to this day, who have not been regathered by the Holy Spirit at the command of God, will be called true Israel or they will simply be called my people. So here is the message. As I was preparing the first part of this prophecy that I actually thought was the only part, the Lord said this to me, this is your last 4th of July in peace. Now I have to say that I was not aware or focused on the fact that the 4th of July was coming. What brought it to my consciousness was as I'm working tonight, my neighbors who can always be depended on for noise, started to set off firecrackers. And I was thinking, why are we having firecrackers on a Tuesday? Why on earth are people setting off firecrackers on a Tuesday? And then when I looked at the top of my computer, I saw that it's the second and I knew instantly, okay, it's the early celebrations that they always do year after year. And once I thought that, I set my eyes back. Once I thought that, I set my eyes back to the laptop where I was working on the prophecy. And then the Lord suddenly spoke and he said, this is your last 4th of July in peace. And I paused and I thought about it because the Lord first said this to me in July of 2021. Again, the neighbors were doing what they do best early on. And the Lord said, America does not know that she is celebrating her last. So some of you may remember that prophecy where God says that America is totally unaware of the future and the ending that he has for her. And she is celebrating her last, her last 4th of July, her last Christmases, her last whatever kind of holidays we have here, last Labor Days, last Columbus Day, last Thanksgivings, the Lord said to me very clearly that this is a nation that is in her final throes of life. And imagine you are coming to the end of your life and you're still thinking that you're, uh, uh, you know, you're in your youth, you're in your 20s, you're in your early 30s, that kind of thing. Imagine you are coming to the end of life prescribed for you, and yet you think you still have so much more life ahead of you. So God was telling me all the way back in 2021, America is celebrating her last, and she does not know it. So when he said this, the last 4th of July in peace, I thought, that tracks, because I've heard it before. And then he said, please listen, because I'm going to have to go back. I might pause quite a bit to have to go back to other prophecies. He said, tell them that in the beginning of Joe Biden's presidency, there was an insurrection, an overthrow, a warning shot of what America could be like if headship were challenged by force. 
It was told to them before it happened, and yet when it happened, they were shocked as if they never heard it before. Tell them again that I will shake the White House. I will ripple up under it and send the plans and agendas into full emergency mode. Joe Biden is coming down and a new king and system will be raised up over the Republic. Your flag will come down in the nation, America. It will fall from the flagpole in the future as the spirit of God abandons you to your enemies. Your gates and walls will be overrun. Your laws will be trampled and amended so many times that they'll become useless and unable to protect you. Dictatorship, regime, you use those words so freely. You will see what it feels like to live in that. You will see what it feels like to live without freedoms, without liberties, without bread even to feed your children. I trampled Israel when they disobeyed me, my people, my crown. And so I will stop there for the present moment. And so I will go back to the beginning of the prophecy. I will go back to the top right after God is speaking about the 4th of July period and about how America is having her last 4th of July that she will have in peace. It's not that God is saying that people won't celebrate the 4th of July, but there's, um, there's a different type of feeling when the nation is feeling prosperous, when the nation is feeling strong, when the nation is feeling confident, when economics are lining up, when pockets are fatter, business is booming, there's surplus cash in the economy, the job sector is growing, you can move between jobs easily, you're not pressed for only taking low paying, low turnout types of jobs, you're not working extra hours just to make bills meet. When it comes time to celebrate the holidays in America, it definitely feeds into how well are people doing personally? How well are people doing economically? How well are people doing socially? Do people feel heard by their leaders? Do people feel understood by the people who are in charge of them? Is there prosperity in the land? It makes a difference. And so it makes a difference. And so God is saying here that America is not going to be able to really enjoy her fourths from now on because the nation is in decline, the nation is suffering, and also the larger mass of the population is heavily asleep, thinking themselves safe when they are anything but. And then God is referring here to an older time, and I went back to look for the prophecy. The prophecy is from November the 21st, 2020. The prophecy is called Ezekiel 13, prophecy of a great fall, and it was talking about President Donald Trump, how much Donald Trump is lifted up in the minds and the hearts and the imaginations of the American people, how much people venerate this man to the point of idolatry. I still see people coming here and arguing that they don't idolize Donald Trump. It's just that they just like him a lot. And all I have to say is the words of a man's mouth will never be greater than the words of the Lord's mouth. First of all, when it comes to the issue of idolatry, idolatry has nothing to do with what you, the human being, think you are doing. The only person who can judge whether actions is idolatry is a deity or God. You are not a God. So your feelings about whether you think your excessive love for Donald Trump equals idolatry are moot. They are pointless. They mean nothing. They're just words in the wind. The person who can decide how our response and how our behavior around certain things, certain people, and certain events or certain ideologies the only one who can ably decide if we have crossed from admiration and support into idolatry is God. And God has clearly said steadfastly the entire time that I've been here that Donald Trump is an idol in the nation of America and therefore he will strike him down and he will allow his enemies to take his life. That has always been the prophetic word here and it's not going to change unless the Lord himself gives me an update. That update doesn't come from people out there. It will come from the Lord himself sovereignly if he so wishes to change it and thus far, he has never said anything to me that indicates any interest on his part on changing the word that has come about ex-president Donald Trump. And so God said, tell them in the beginning of Joe Biden's presidency that there was an insurrection, 
There was an overthrow. There was a warning shot of what America could be like if the headship were challenged by force. The prophetic word that has always been brought here is that America is going to suffer a coup, but it is not going to be the kind of coup that most people are used to. And I would always explain that visible coups are when everybody wakes up one morning and finds that maybe three army generals have gotten together and they're tired of what is going on in the country, or maybe they just have burning ambitions in their own heart and they think they can do a better job than the president and they don't care about elections. They rise up unilaterally taking advantage of the power of the military, and they will usually go to all the seats of power. They will go to the state house where the president is, and they will go to the Supreme Court. They will go to the radio and TV stations. They're usually very coordinated. They grab key people. They bring accusations against them. They put them in jail, whether the people like it or not. Usually the president is grabbed. If he's lucky, he manages to run away in the official car or an unmarked car. And then the new government de facto government, the people who have seized power, will then come on the airwaves and tell you that the old government is no more. We have a new government. We are the interim government. We are doing this for the people. We are doing this because of the oppression. We are doing this because of the corruption. We are doing it because of the influences of the West. Whatever they say, that is the textbook definition of a coup. And I have always said here at the Lord's Revelation that America is too developed a nation to start doing what other nations do for a coup. The people who rise to power don't rise to power because they are not crafty. They don't get up there by being dumb. They know that they cannot have visible upsets of power in front of a nation that always boasts about Harvard, MIT, and wherever else they went for college. The level of development in the nation the amount of public expenditure, the amount of investment that has been put into America as a whole to build it up as a first world giant. It will never be acceptable that people will march upon the White House with, with potato sacks on their heads and shooting into the air and say, stick him up. That's never going to work. And so the coup that is happening in the United States, God has always said, is a coup of subterfuge. It will be done before you know it. It's always been cooking. It's always been cooking in the background and you have constantly heard prophecy after prophecy after prophecy come to say that there is a screen between the White House and what they are doing there and the people of the United States and the White House is invested in maintaining the facade for as long as possible until all plans are in place at which time, just like the old style plays, they would build a set and they would have one set after another, after another, after another in front of each other. And every time they wanted to change the scene from Romeo is here with Juliet to, okay, now they're in the courtyard to, okay, now they're at the Montague household. Two guys would simply come and grab both sides of a set and run off with it. And then you would see that there was another set already prepared behind it. That is what is going to happen in America. When they are done preparing everything in the next step of the plan, the first set is going to have two guys come and hold it and run off. And to those who are still dead in MAGA expectations, even the Trump presidency was a set. I know it is so painful for people to hear the truth. And that is because you are the monkey with the nuts. It's an old proverb. It's an old story of a little monkey who came in the forest and he saw a, a jar that the hunter had set there. He didn't know that the hunter had set the jar there, but he saw a jar that the hunter had set there and it was filled with the kind of nuts that monkeys like. It was a very big jar, but it had a very narrow neck. And the monkey seeing all these nuts thought, oh my goodness, at least this is prepared breakfast. And he thrusts his hands in there and he grabs a very big fistful of nuts. But now he's trying to pull his hand out of it and he can't. The jar is, the mouth of the jar is big enough for him to put a fist in. He can put a hand in easy enough, but once he grabs enough nuts, his hands become a fist. He's unable to pull his hand out of this small necked jar. And as the story goes, the monkey then begins to hear footsteps approaching. Obviously the hunter who has laid a trap didn't lay the trap to walk away from it forever. 
Hunters lay trap, traps with stealth and cunning because they want a reward. They want to catch something. That is why hunters hunt and lay traps. They don't go out there to come back empty handed and say, oh, you know, I'm just doing it for the exercise. So the hunter begins to approach because perhaps he has heard the monkey chattering and the monkey was chattering and so much anger and frustration. He was moving the jar all around because the jar itself wasn't fixed. Please understand that this is not the kind of trap that you would catch lions and bears with. The big trap that closes on a large animal and the trap is usually tied to a tree or it's nailed into the ground so that when the animal is fighting, the trap is affixed. This was simply a jar sitting there with nuts in it. And the monkey was moving his hand all around, trying to get his hand out because he wanted to leave with those nuts. The monkey was not forced to have those nuts. The monkey could have let go of the nuts at any time, pulled his hand out and gone to safety. But the hunter was able to walk up on him and net him and kill him. And why is that? Because the monkey had his arm up to the elbow in a fist full of lies and doctrine that he absolutely refused to let go of until it cost him his life. And this is a picture of many people in the church and out of the church. You have your hand in the bowl of rapture doctrine. You have your hand in the bowl of pastor doctrine. You have your hand in the bowl of prosperity doctrine. You have your hand in the bowl of political idol worship, stars and musician worship. You have your hand in the bowl of fornication. You can hear Satan on his way to cull this earth of its sinners. You can hear that God is going to allow him to hack down the harvest any way he feels like for Satan knows that he has a short time and he will do the most. But because you are deaf and dead in sin and cold to Christ and hot to political idols and ideologies that you have held all your life, you insist on keeping your paw in a jar that was created to slaughter you. And all I can say is be it unto you according to your choices. Trump was one set piece. You can find it in so many prophecies such as the fall of Dagon. It's talking about Trump. You can find it in the prophecy about Ready Player One. It's talking about Obama, Kamala, Joe Biden, and Trump. You can find it in so many prophecies that tell you that there's no such thing anymore for at least a couple of decades as Republican and Democrat. There is only the front government, the front facade, and then there is a whole new world at the back that doesn't include you. They don't care about how you vote. They don't care about how you feel on the major issues. They're simply going to change the political climate so that if they feel let's make the red team happy. Then they're going to bring a man that's going to be strong on abortion and he's going to be strong on Christian values and he's going to be standing and giving interviews and holding his Bible upside down. And because your hand is deep in the bowl of deadly nuts, you will, in, you will ignore all that and say, a Christian, a Christian with 89,000 affairs and other sins that's right in front of your eyes, a Christian has come to lead us. Our nation is saved. Back to righteousness we go. Because that's the level of deception that we have here in the United States. When they're done pandering to that lust, when they no longer find it funny, then they simply knock down that facade and all of a sudden, another guy is there. And he's saying something else. He's saying, let's get these abortions rolling. What a difficult shift for people who are enjoying four abortion-free years, four trans-free years, four gay-free years, actually thinking that that was how life was going to be. It's a plot, it's a ploy, it's a game. They change the set pieces and they laugh and laugh and laugh to see you blow your top out there whenever they change the pieces of the Punch and Judy show. God has already told me that there are wise people in this country who know how the game is played and they don't care either way. They've got their guns, they've got their stocks, they've got their whatever, and they've withdrawn from the game that is America. But there's other people who feel as if they're playing to win. They keep you locked in with policies. 
They keep you locked in with agendas. They keep you locked in with various directives. Have you ever seen any other country that divides itself into Black Month, Pacific Islander Month, White Month, Green Month, Gay Month, Trans Month, Native American Month? Have you ever seen any other sane grouping of people who call themselves a country who practice the form of madness that is practiced here? And not only is it practiced, but it is shown as a blueprint to other nations, as a sign of development. In America, we actually think that the madness that is practiced here are signs of how highly developed and apex predators we are. And then we are confused when other people just look at us and think, mm. there's visible shifts going on. And what God is saying here in the beginning of the prophecy is that they're about to change the set piece again. So I'm going to read to you from a prophecy from November, 2021, November 21st, 2020, and the prophecy is called Ezekiel 13, Prophecy of a Great Fall. And the primary point of this prophecy was God saying certain things that I think I had published for the first time, such as President Trump was not going to win the election. God showed me a set of pedestals. All the presidents who had served were still standing on their pedestals. So it came all the way from uh, George Washington and people like, you know, Abraham Lincoln and stuff like that. And then it was coming down um, to Obama and then to Trump. And as I looked across the timelines of the presidents, I saw that the pedestals of the presidents were actually deteriorating. They were nice and shiny in the beginning, good quality pedestals. But then as it began to go, they were using cheaper and cheaper materials, duller and duller metals and stuff like that. And then when it came to President Trump, his pedestal was uh, very dirty, okay? It had very dirty steps and his podium was cracked and his podium was looking in a very crumbled and decrepit state. And I said that I saw him with his head down, his shoulders down, and he was a very defeated man. He looked every inch of his age. He looked old. Usually this man carries himself around as quite an imposing presence, but he didn't look like that in this vision. He looked tired. He looked defeated. And I saw that he was about to step down from his podium. So God was showing me that this man was going to step down and he was not going to be any kind of president despite what everybody else was saying. And so um, God also mentioned in this prophecy that Donald Trump was going to be killed because God says that um, it will not be tolerated of him for him to actually rise back to power, for him to rise back to prominence. And that is just a side note because the main thing here that we are looking at is where God was talking about the states of the government. And here it is. The Lord then said that 2021 will be a difficult and traumatizing year for America. The first month will bring damage and disruptions to the expectations of the American people. And there will be an outcry, resistance, and great anger in the country. Separation will occur between its people and the nation will become weakened from within. And so this prophecy, you're hearing that it came at the end of 2020 during the election period. And God was saying that 2021 was going to kick off with a bang from the very first month. America was going to have an outcry. America was going to have great resistance. And as a result of that, God said that it was going to be a lot of anger in the country and separation occurring between its people. And then six days from the new year on January 6th, we had the so-called insurrection at the Capitol. And I just looked at that thing and I thought these people really don't know what the word insurrection means because you ask Thailand, okay? Or you ask um, perhaps Vietnam or ask Cambodia or ask the DRC what a re insurrection is and they will tell you. Those are very powerfully violent, hard to control uprisings. Other people in the world know how to carry out the meanings of words properly. But here in a nation that heavily relies on rhetoric, people just find the biggest and most bombastic words they can use for the press headlines and run with it. That was not an insurrection. You can't say that the Buffalo Horns guy was an insurrectionist. People are standing and taking selfies and then they're making it seem as if the seat of power were, was about to fall. So yes, God was saying that from the first month, damage and disruption would come to American people's expectations. And there were quite 
a couple of disruptions already because we all know that in January 2021, up to the day of the inauguration, the MAGA white hats, uh, cue there we go all, uh, white hat, black hat, green hat brigade, half the country following after the slop of false prophets and their own expectations were convinced that God was going to arise from his throne and overthrow the election results and, and bring out new ballots and say, you see, it was all a plot. And that's because until the last minute, I'm going to say everything because God told me to tell you everything because the point of prophecy is to always take you back to the back so you can never act shocked about where we are now. The false prophets lied to you that Trump was coming back until they could not possibly lie to you. And I know exactly when they stopped lying to you. They stopped lying to you around the midterms, which was years after they told you that God was going to put Trump back in power. That's when they stopped lying to you. They finally had to let the lie go because they could see that even if they recount with the ultimate recounting machine, which has not been invented yet, Nothing was going to change their lies. And then you know what happened? They dropped those lies and picked up a new set of lies. God is saying that he's going to make everything new again. That's the lie they shifted to. They told you about the red wave that was coming in the midterms. And you know what? You being irresponsible and you being filled with lies yourself, the majority of people who will watch this video, whether now or in the future, you allowed those first lies to go. You didn't catch them out on it. You didn't hold them accountable for the lies that all these people fed you. The desperate hope that was in your heart that what they were saying is true. They lied on God and they said that God told them these things. And when all those prophecies had no choice but to fail, you came out and said silly and irresponsible, wicked things like we're all human and we miss it. The gall of you, America. You will pardon anything. I said recently that if Satan himself rolled in onions to create tears in his eyes and said he was sorry for the millennia of harm that he has called, you as a people would be ready to forgive him and petition God for a second chance for the devil. That is how accepting you are of lies because the lies keep you comfortable. The lies provide a stability where it seems that you will get what you want. But God said to me to tell you today, you will never get what you want. You will get what he will do, but you will not get what you want. You accepted those lies. You perpetrated those lies. You shared it to all your Facebook friends. And then the midterms came and once again, you were disappointed. And then the false prophets shifted once more and they told you gaze upon the future for 2024 approacheth. Does it not? And you said right on. So. God's comment that 2021 would be difficult and traumatizing with many jolts was fulfilled exactly as he said it. Six days from us entering into the new year, the country became split. The witch hunt of January 6th is still persisting up to this day. We are in July 2024 and those cases are still sitting before courts unresolved causing deep bitterness in some parts of the nation against other parts of the nation. And here we are, the Lord never misses. And so God is saying that there is great activity going on behind the curtain. That is one prophecy that shows you that this was covered since 2020. The second one where God was talking about the fact that the American political system is nothing but play acting and movies is this, it is called undone. And it was July the 3rd, 2021 which makes it exactly three years from the time I gave it because today is July the 3rd, 2024. So in exact three years since I gave this prophecy. And here's what the Lord says, prepare yourself for the political shaking that is coming. Upheaval and drama are coming. Theater, like events in a movie where actors play parts and nothing is real. Movie drama will be seen in the halls of power. Joe Biden will be removed. Joe Biden will fall. Kamala Harris will rise and another whose shadow has never left the White House will rise with her. That person is Barack Obama. Barack Obama is going to be the amorphous voice, the great puppet master behind the curtain telling President, Vice President Kamala Harris 
what to say, what not to say, how to act. I've already prophesied here. So whenever you hear anyone else parroting it, at least you will know who said it years back that Kamala Harris is going to have an amazing transformation. She's going to go from a woman who's inept in speaking and a woman who cackles a lot and a woman who doesn't seem to be able to answer most of the questions that are put to her. And she is suddenly going to become very poised. She's going to become very able. She's going to become very articulate. And that's because she's going to have a consummate orator, Barack Obama, in her ear. She's going to be a president of an earpiece. She's going to have an earpiece in her ear. And Barack Obama is going to have his wish of sitting in the background and simply dictating his ideas, his policies, what he wants through the earpiece of yet another willing puppet. And so, um, God says that intrigues will erupt in the, in the halls of power. Replacement theory is what he called it. One will be replaced by another. Biden will be taken away and you will see the new world order bolder and more open than you've ever seen it before. The times are finished for America. In the end, everything she has ever done, all her works, all her legacy shall be removed just as she and her leaders will be removed. So I'm always telling you here, Imagine, this is a nation of people who love to invest. People love to put their money in whatever money can be put into it. It's real estate. It's, at one point, it was the tech bubble. Anything that can spin a dime in America is fair game for people. So people love to invest. But how unwise of a nation to become heavily vested in politics, and yet God says that everything about the whole political mechanism is simply going to be smacked away. It's simply going to be tossed away. It's simply going to be ripped away. It's simply going to be discarded. When American sovereignty, when America's right to rule herself, when America's right to um, dictate her own policy and make her own laws are taken away and she is crammed into the beast system, a lot of people will have polar meltdowns simply because they are unfamiliar with a world where they're just like everyone else. Americans don't think that they're like everyone else. They're trained to believe that they're better. And so imagine when the B system treats you just common, when the B system just makes you like Mexico, Venezuela, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Guam, Canada. Nothing set apart, nothing different. No flag, no anthem. Nothing to distinguish you as America just put into gray garb of conformity. That will break many people's hearts and that's because they're soldered, your hearts are soldered, welded to the Republic. The Republic has taken up all the real estate in your heart and there's no room for Christ. There is no room for Jesus Christ in the heart of an idolater. I don't care how you fight, you know I won't be able to hear it. This is God's estimation of this country and you will hear it in this message that you have pushed me out of everything. And so I will leave you to your destruction. So he refers to the insurrection that took place in the beginning and said it was just a warning shot of what could happen to America if the headship were ever challenged by force. And he said that he told you about it before it happened. You can hear that that he told you about it in November 2020, and yet when it happened in 2021, God said that people were acting shocked as if they never heard of that before. And he says that once more, he's going to ripple under the White House like an earthquake, and he's going to shake it, and he will send all their plans and agendas into emergency mode. So that means that these people have been planning for multiple outcomes. I've been saying here for years that <laughs> it is extremely, extremely unwise to think that the U.S. government is a fox with one hole. This government has multiple holes. It has 10,000 ways. They have people paid simply to think of, here's the scenario, here's the 50 ways that it could play out, here's the flow chart, and we're still trying to find ways to fight any fire. God says that the American government plans strategically 
for ways to implement what it wants to do. And when I say government, I'm not speaking about the visible government, whether it's a red government or a Democrat government. I'm speaking of the unseen hand, the manipulators, the masterminds behind. He says that they plan multiple ways to bring about the outcomes they want. So if they want Americans to riot, they will come up with different scenarios guaranteed to incite rage and protests. And then if they try one and people say, you know what, that's a psyop, and they laugh, then, then they will say, okay, okay, you got us. And they will simply move to plan A. Plan A doesn't get the kind of visceral reaction. People get mad, but then people forget about that and they go to TikTok and they, stop dis they start discussing and saying, these guys just hate us. Then they're going to be like, okay, okay. Move to plan Y. So they will escalate it from A to B to Y. And Y is guaranteed to get people wild and feral every time. So God says that they're always a step ahead and they have multiple routes that they can bring about the, um, the outcome that they want. And so God says that he's going to ripple under their plans and he will send them fleeing into emergency mode. But whatever it is, God says that Joe Biden is coming down and a new king and a new system will be raised up over the republic. And I've always told you that when you see President Biden going bye-bye, it doesn't matter whose name they're floating to you now. God has never named any of these names that they're floating. Oh, the Florida governor. Oh, the California governor. Those things are the little extra party munchies that keep those of you who are vested in TV. TV is your profit. And so that's why you say those things. And then you want to come here and make it my problem asking Celestia, what do you think about this? I don't think anything. I have a tablet and I have instructions. And so I don't need to think. I just need to read and explain and then go to sleep. The person who's going to succeed Joe Biden is Kamala Harris. We are coming to the age of the Jezebel presidency. We are coming to the age where the women of this country are going to control the men. They're going to have all the power. Everything is going to be female centric. If you think that feminism is militant in America now, I already did a, an entire 15 minute segment for you in 2022, telling you that the women of this country will show you a side that you've never seen before. And you've pretty much seen some scary sides ever since TikTok was invented. But God is saying that the women of America, when Kamala Harris becomes president, will do things in this country that until they do it, male and female will never know that women are capable of doing that. God says that we will live in a nation of highly feminized and um, cuckolded men, cowed men, and women who are like men, militant, loud, and dangerous. So there's nothing you can do to wiggle out of that prophecy. You're waiting and you're setting dates on your calendar. God bless you. It's good to know that you have Google Calendar. Let that work for you. Because the Lord has always said, for instance, in the prophecy, changes ahead. He has always said that they will make themselves puzzle solvers. They will say, okay, in order for this to happen, then that has to happen. Okay, because the election is coming up, so this has to happen because that has to happen and this has to happen. And yet there's, there's 10 billion ways. The prophecy tells you that Obama will come and then your safety net, some of you, is to say, Obama can't come. He's already served two terms. Yes, because in other countries, presidents never sat and made laws that changed everything you know. It's never happened that someone in power changed the law and then all of a sudden a second termer can have a third term. It's already happened in America. There was an older president who got to serve a third term because it was an emergency time. It was war time. But maybe all the people from those ages passed away so there's no one alive in the United States to remember that you did have a man who served three terms with the support of everybody, because they all said he's a great guy with a solid head on his shoulders. He got us through so much. He can do it again. Nobody remembers that guy, apparently. There's no one alive who knows that that happened in history. So that's why it's impossible for Obama to come back, because the Constitution says so. Even though the prophecies you have heard said that the Constitution is going to have as much value as a used up roll of toilet paper. But for now, the constitution is still God. And so when the real God speaks, the demigods say that the paper God can never be undone. But God says, July the 3rd, 2021, that America will be undone, that everything about her politically, including her leaders, will be rolled back. And a new system 
the fourth beast that tramples the residue under its feet that I've been speaking about here for a long time is going to trample this nation to the dust. And when America stands up, she will be unrecognizable to all, a slave nation. So let us wait to see if the Constitution or the prophecy of the Most High will prevail. The Lord says that Biden will come down and a new king, along with a new system, will be raised up over the Republic of the United States. He says that the flag will be brought down in the nation of America. It will fall down from the flagpole in the future as the spirit of God abandons the nations to her enemies. So I spoke of this briefly um, just now in this message saying that the American flag will come down and something called the North American Federation. It will be a flag joining South America to the United States to Canada. And so this whole this whole block will be called the North American Federation, and it will be one common group, one trading group, one money, one flag, one people with some kind of token system for you to be able to travel in between. And God is not going to stand in the way of the beast system manifesting itself. Kenya, you would do well to listen since you seem to think that simply by saying my God is merciful, then all of a sudden Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 are going to jump out of the Bible and not happen because you said so. The gates and the walls of the nation will be overrun. So also your laws will be trampled and amended so many times that they'll become useless and unable to protect you. There's been a major Supreme Court ruling that has people up in arms complaining, very upset, saying that it gives the, president, the presidential office too much power. And the reason that people are very much upset about that now is because they're terrified that the person who will go and sit in the seat with all that apparent power will be former president Donald Trump. That's the reason that people are beside themselves. Because of course, if it's Democrat power, then they do not mind at all because then the, ru the ruling would favor whoever is the incumbent. Please also bear in mind this. I brought a recent prophecy here and I will have to remember and put it in the comment section because they have so many names that it escapes me. But... In that prophecy, what God was saying was that there's a visible government and then they have a play system going. It was the prophecy about masks. Let me see what the title is. Just a moment, please. Oh yes, it's called Cameo. Cameo, a government practicing to deceive. So God was talking about how they're all playing a role and they're all playing parts. And you can keep that in mind. It will be left in the, pro in the comment section for you. And then the trampling of laws and amending the constitution so many times that the laws become useless and they are unable to protect. You can look at a prophecy called the Patriot Act for that. And God was talking about how ever since the Patriot Act went into effect, it's been highly invasive in the United States, but that we are going to have a new system of laws come in that make the Patriot Act look positively friendly. And I was saying that search and seizure laws, search and seizure powers for the government are going to come back. Um, there's also going to be indefinite detention. There's going to be detention without cause. They will not read your rights to you. You will not have access to a lawyer. You may not even be brought before a court. You just may be found summarily guilty. You will not get this assessment by a jury of your peers. All of that is going to fall away. So I've always talked about how if the laws are an overarching protection and the people are under it, they will simply change the laws by weakening them one finger at a time until you have no protection over your head. And then once the law has been weakened by mandates, emergency powers, emergency measures, martial law and things like that, um, state of emergency then they will simply say, you know, this law is rather archaic. It doesn't line up with these brand new policies and protection and peace and safety measures that we have. Who all vote that we should retire this old law? And what kind of old law will, be, will they be talking about? Freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms and to be able to use those arms against a rogue government. That thing, those laws that they will be calling pesky little laws. Why don't we get rid of that old thing? That will be fundamental freedoms and human rights of the United States. So please hear what the Lord is saying. Um, 
that the gates and walls of the nation will fall down because the safety of the nation is basically its walls, its protections, its civil liberties. But that's not all. The gates and walls that God is talking about being overrun, I brought a live prophecy prayer call here. Again, the name is in the wind, but it will be in the comment section. And that is talking about the huge migrant influx into the nation over the last three years. Over the last three years, America's walls and gates have become extremely porous, extremely beneficial to whoever wants to hop a plane or jump a canoe or whatever, crawl under the fence and come. It's become extremely open. And then God revealed in that prayer call that the people who are coming in, whether you like it or not, believe it or not, are going to be armed by the government. The people who are coming in, the Lord says that they're actually going to be the gatekeepers of the country. You will no longer see it's the buff, blue-eyed dudes in Texas minding the border. It will actually be these people who will be given control of the border and things like that. God says that they are something like a sleeper army that will be extremely full of anger towards Americans once the time comes for them to be moved into motion. I never give dates here, so I have no idea when that will be. God just says that it is a thing that will happen. He said that your wardens, that's what he called them, your wardens are actually inside the nation with you. So just imagine the Chinese inside the nation with you, uh, Islam inside the nation with you, um, migrants inside the nation with you, Russia inside the nation with you, and there you have it. Another thing that the Lord has said that relates to this prophecy is that um, those who are in power will fight to keep power. That prophecy definitely, when I find which one it is, I'm going to put an asterisk on it. Give me about 24 hours because I never watch these within the first 24 to 48 hours. But please come back and check the comment section and I will leave a list of prophecies there. If I can do it earlier, I will do it earlier. But God says that those who are in power will fight to keep power power. They will fight to stay in power. They will say, it's us. I still remember how he said it. He said, they will say, it's us. It's our time now. We're in and we're not going. We have it and we're going to keep it. And God says that those who are the incumbent in this country will fight dirty to continue their rule. As long as you understand that. So there will be mutiny in the White House with factions and divisions supporting one side or the other. So right now, the Lord is telling you that the reason that you may not be hearing much in terms of press conferences um, is because they're actually picking sides over there. And I can tell you exactly how he laid it on my heart. People are trying to pick sides according to what's going to give them career longevity. They can't tell whether to jump ship or stay in place. Everybody's thinking about the paycheck. Everybody's thinking about the mortgage. Everybody's thinking about, am I going to last in the White House or not? And so they're picking sides, supporting one side or the other. And God said, they're going to absolutely hide it from the public, but the signs of it will be visible if you know what to look for. Frayed interpersonal relations will have people watching their back and scrambling to come out on the winning side. And the mayhem that is going to follow US elections will be something never seen before. So everybody's trying to figure out, do they stick with Biden? Is Biden the way forward? Do they jump ship to Kamala Harris? Is she the one? Do they choose neither of them and hold out to see if it's Governor Newsom or whoever whoever's name they're floating in the press? They're blowing up these names in the press to do a looky-loo on you. I'm just going to tell you flat out. They're blowing up various names in the press in the hopes that you will look at the various names. They're trying to get reactions to see who might people like to float. Meanwhile, they're working on their own thing in the background. So God says there's going to be mayhem following these elections, like something we've never seen before. He said it will be tumult. A tumult is an upset. It's an outcry. It's basically like when you see the LGBTQ children or the beehive at their best manic level just noise and upset and upheaval and the throwing of all available toys. That's what tumult is. A great heaving like the sea because there is no peace in the land. 
He also says it will be trauma, which means no matter how this cookie crumbles, there's going to be a group of people crying in the corner. That's what trauma is. Something that is hard to accept, hard to deal with, hard to process. And in the case of Christians who have had the benefit of this blog and then rejected it, it will be a very bitter pill to swallow. Very, very bitter pill to swallow, to know that God tried to warn you in advance and you rejected it and said, it's just hate. And then it turned out not to be hate, but truth. So it will be tumult. It will be trauma. God says it will be different. It will be a new nation attempting to look the same as it has always been, but it is not. So you've heard that part. It will not go the way you expect. And that is all I am sent to tell you. And if you listen to the prophecy changes ahead, you will hear a section, old viewers, you will remember this section where God says you will not get what you want. You will be like a person straining in rage and frustration because you will not get what you want. America will not get what you want. God says, prepare for the United States to begin her brand new persona as the newest banana republic on earth. Americans will not get what they want. And God says that the other nations, especially our contemporaries in the EU and in Australia and in other first world nations, as they are called, God says that those nations will be highly mocking and laughing a lot and saying, America, what seems to be the problem? Do you need election observers to see to it that you have free and fair elections? Do you need help, America? What is going on? That's what the Lord says is going to happen. It will not go the way you expect. And that is all I am sent to tell you. Dictatorship and regime, God says, you use those words so freely, but you will see what it feels like to live in a dictatorship. This is the coming of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, when you see that woman in power, whenever you see her sitting there, whether there's an interim period, whether there's a delay, whether there's a pause, whatever there is, the Lord says, when you see that woman, you are looking at the first beast system president that America has ever had. A beast system president is a person who is a visible representation of the satanic kingdom, the so-called one world order, the beast system of Revelation 13, Daniel 7. That person absolutely has no sympathies towards their own country. Kenya, once again, I hope you're tuning in because there are some pills that you are having trouble swallowing at the moment. You have been used to hearing America's punishment, but now that it is your turn to receive one word from God, you are choking on it. You will need the grace of God. You will need softer hearts than you have. You will need to humble yourselves greatly and begin to practice repentance because that's the only way God is going to show you any mercy whatsoever. To defend yourselves and to say we are not guilty will bring you a harder fist of judgment from God than you are currently undergoing. A word to the wise is sufficient. And so um, God says that a beast system president is a president that has no sympathies towards their nation. In order to be a part of the beast system, first of all, the first thing that will happen is that the leader will be compelled to join the beast system. So this is not quite like fraternities or Greek letter organizations where they recruit you because they see that you have certain skills and they want you to be a part of the brotherhood because they want to benefit from the gifts that you have. And they also want you to be loyal to the organizations. Greek letter organizations, sororities, um, secret societies, and things like that, they're always looking to increase influence and power. And so they strengthen themselves through bloodline ties, or even if you're not from a good bloodline family, if you have great gifts, like they can see you're going to be a great golfer, you're going to be a great basketball player, something like that. They bring you in because they want all the richness of the earth to be centered in them. They want all the best people to be in them. But with the beast system, it is a mallet. It is a hammer because the beast system, please understand people, because the beast system has this one amazing benefit on its side. God says that it's going to exist. It's in God's book. Something is in God's book. You are kicking against the goads. You are kicking against the inevitable. You will never be able to stop something that's in the Bible from happening. This is the mistake of Christians. They think that God loves them so much that he will allow them to pray away his words. This is, this is insanity. 
but still many Christians indulge in it. They think that prayer is so powerful and God loves them so much that when something is in the Bible that says he will wear out the saints, then they think they will say, oh God, he shall not wear us out in Jesus name, fire, fire. And then all of a sudden the Bible will start erasing itself and start to say fire, fire. And this is just madness. So the beast system has this one thing on its side. It's written in Revelation 13. And before John wrote about it, Daniel wrote about it some few hundred years before. So it's got two witnesses to its benefit, which means that it has the right to exist. It has the right to conquer the tribes and the people exactly as it says in Revelation 13 and 7. And it shall do that for the time allotted to it, whether we like it or not. So the beast system is a spiritual fact. And because it's a spiritual fact, it has the power of compulsion on its side. So when they come for a president and tell him, we're going to torch this nation to the ground, or you can do it another way. You can come in and then we can give you a soft retirement. We'll put that 50 million in the Swiss bank account for you. And what does it matter to you if these useless eaters suffer? What does it matter to you if the healthcare becomes dangerous? If the doctors lack gauze and... Um, chloroquine, and they lack so many things until people start to die in childbirth. We will make sure that all your babies get born in London at Westminster Hospital. You will live differently from the people. What do you say? I'm getting ahead of myself because this is the next prophecy that is, it's one of the prophecies in the pipeline that the Lord has given me, explaining how the beast system works. That when they come to the presidents, they will tell the presidents, do you want to do this the easy way or the hard way? You can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. The easy way you get benefits, the people suffer, but you know something, you'll have air conditioning and you'll never run out of food. The hard way is when you act like the president of Haiti and you start to question about the harm in the arm, injectable harms that came, and you begin to have too many questions, and you begin to say too many things on the microphone, and the next thing we will just see the pine box, the funeral box, with the flag of Haiti on top, with the flag of whatever country that wants to talk too much on top. I did say to you that pre presidents face different pressures than you that's just trying to pay bills. When the beast system comes knocking, the beast system has the right God gave it the right. It is amazing to be living in a time among Christians who do not know that the rise of the beast system is the deserved punishment of a wicked world. Imagine, I blame the rapture pastors. They're the ones who have filled you with these lies that you believe. And now your hand is in the jar of nuts and you refuse to let it go, come hell or high water. The beast system has a right to be the beast system. It says so. It says that he, first beast and second beast, will be having the time of their life, forcing people to worship their image. Did you not read that yet? When they come knocking, they will make presidents and nations and offer a QR, QR code, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, electric car. They will bring those electric cars over and then hijack all of them and just drive the citizens into the, into the side wall on the side of the highway. And then say, oh, it's a factory defect. Recall 2 million cars. Then bring other cars that are even more deadly and will fry you. They will tell you that the seats are, are heated seats. Then suddenly the seat just heats up to to inside volcano temperatures, cooks you and then cools down and the investigators are saying, we have no idea how she died. It was the seat. The beast system is a diabolical reality. And when it comes knocking, just read where it says he causes all. The people who lead, the visible faces, the leaders of the beast system have absolutely no national sympathies they don't care if they're Guyanese. Once they get your president, he becomes Satanese. He becomes Bistanese. He doesn't care about Guyana anymore. He doesn't care about Jamaica anymore. He doesn't care about France anymore. He's just going to walk off with his man wife and do whatever the beast says to do. And that is how it is when the beast comes calling. You ought to know this if you are saved. And so, God says that America uses the words dictatorship and regime so freely. So you will always hear this coming out of the White House. 
Kim Jong-un is a dictator, Xi Jinping is a dictator, and no one will look at the dictatorship of uh, Richard Nixon. They will not look at the dictatorship of FDR and the things he did. They will not look at the dictatorship of Obama. They will not look at the murderous rule of George Bush. They will just overlook all that stuff and call other people dictators and regimes because the regime here is couched in a velvet glove. It's there, the hand of iron, but with the hand of velvet, Cheerios and all that, the people are asleep in the paw of that iron claw and they, are, they have not felt it possibly until now. God says you will see what it feels like to live in a real regime. You will see what it feels like to live without freedoms and to live without your civil liberties because the government that is coming in with a visible Jezebel at the head who will waft a spiritual Jezebelic nature over the whole nation the way that your sisters and girlfriends will become so wicked, you will even wonder if you want to be in a relationship anymore. When that nation changes, it will not have freedoms, it will not have liberty, and God says it will even get to the point of starvation without bread to give the children. And now I'm going to shift and I will make a second part to this prophecy. The Lord has actually told me as I've been sitting here to separate them. He said, separate them, don't present them. So it is one prophecy, and now this prophecy is going to end up coming in three parts. So this part will be uploaded, but it is all one prophecy that is called Incoming, a prophecy of war and restoration. This is Incoming, a prophecy of war and restoration, part one. And we will simply call it the seat of the beast, this segment. And so I am Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you. Have patience and give me time and I will come back and put all the messages that I've referenced because the one thing that I have here on this channel is receipts. I do have the receipts, praise God. That is the benefit of being meticulous, writing them down, giving them titles, giving them dates. We can always travel back in time and see that it is proved that it was spoken at a certain time. And so um, I will be back with the second part and God bless you until I see you again. Goodbye.